a version of this resolution by a vote of 405 to 11. 405 to 11. This vote was historic, and I applaud the bipartisan courage of those in the House to stand up for what is right. For those here in the Senate who would consider objecting to this request, I urge you to think long and hard about what that means for your reputation, what it means for history, what that means for the Senate as an institution. History is watching, and it will not look kindly on those who object to recognizing genocide. In recent speeches before the Senate, I've laid out the case for why we must move forward on this resolution. The simple threshold question for this body comes to this. Do we recognize a clear case of genocide when it happens? Or do we let a country like Turkey determine our own views, determine our own sense of history, determine our own moral obligation, and to determine the public record. A Turkey that today is committing atrocities against the Kurds in Syria. A Turkey that has teamed up with Russia and the Kremlin in purchasing the S-400 air defense system and just recently used it against an American F-16 to see if it works. A Turkey that works to block forward movement in NATO on key national security objectives of the United States. At what point, Mr. President, do we say enough is enough? At what point do we simply move forward and acknowledge the truth? The truth is that the Armenian genocide happened. It is a fact. To deny that is to deny one of the monstrous acts of history. This denial is a stain on the Senate and our country. We have an opportunity to right that wrong and put the United States Senate on the right side of history. Let's again review some of that history here today. More than 104 years ago, the Ottoman Empire launched a systemic campaign to exterminate the Armenian population through killings, forced deportations, starvation, and other brutal matters. How do we know this? How do we know this? Because United States diplomats were there. They wrote it down and sent it back to the State Department in Washington. Henry Morgenthau, the U.S. ambassador to the Ottoman Empire from 1913 to 16, wrote in his memoir that, quote, when the Turkish authorities gave the order for these deportations, they were merely giving the death warrant to a whole race. They understood this well. And in their conversations with me, they made no particular attempt to conceal this fact. I am confident that the whole history of the human race contains no such horrible episode as this. The great massacres and persecutions of the past seem almost insignificant when compared to the sufferings of the Armenian race in 1915. End of the quote by Henry Morgenthau. On June 5th of 1915, the United States Council in Aleppo, Jesse Jackson wrote to Ambassador Morgenthau saying, quote, there is a living stream of Armenians pouring into Aleppo from the surrounding towns and villages. The Ottoman government has been appealed to by various prominent people and even by those in authority to put an end to these conditions under the representations that it can only lead to the greatest blame and reproach, but all to no avail. It is without doubt a carefully planned scheme to thoroughly extinguish the Armenian race. On July 24, 1915, in a report to Ambassador Morgenthau, the U.S. Consul in Harput, Leslie Davis, stated that, quote, any doubt that may have been expressed in previous reports as to the government's intention in sending away the Armenians has been removed. It has been no secret that the plan was to destroy the Armenian race as a race. Everything was apparently planned months ago, close quote. And there are continuing elements which I won't read. I'll ask you now to consent that my full statement be included in the record. Without objection. That continues to verify that these diplomats saw the truth with their own eyes and communicated back to their superiors in Washington. They did their job, and the historical record proves it. Now it's up to the individual United States senators to do our job. The government of Turkey has funded lobbyists willing to trumpet lies and make excuses for these atrocities. The Turkish government and its sympathizers have advocated for restrictive laws on expression and against legislation that recognizes the Armenian genocide. They will stop at nothing to bury the truth. 
And I hope the individual senators will not once again fall for it. Any apprehension, any trepidation on the parts of senators who believe this resolution will somehow do irreparable harm to our res uh, relationship with Turkey is simply unfounded. 27 countries have recognized the genocide in one form or another. Some saw trade increases in Turkey following their recognition. 12 members of NATO have recognized the genocide. They still work with Turkey on defense issues. They still have embassies in Accra. Their relationships were not irreparably harmed. Belgium, Canada, the Czech Republic, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Lithuania, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Poland, the Slovak Republic, they all did the right thing. So I say to my friends and colleagues, genocide is genocide. Senators in this body should have the simple courage to say it plainly, say it clearly, and say it without reservation. In every session of Congress since 2006, I have introduced or co-sponsored resolutions affirming the facts of the Armenian Genocide. When I was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I was proud to preside over the passage of an Armenian Genocide Resolution out of the committee. The work continues here today. And if we're not successful this afternoon, I know we're not going to stop until we are. I'm not going to stop until I go through every single senator who's willing to come to the floor and issue an objection on behalf of the administration. Because I think Armenian Americans need to know who stands in support of recognizing the genocide, who opposes that. I want to thank Senator Cruz for joining me in this effort. He's been stalwart with me uh, in this regard, in this bipartisan resolution. I want to thank the 27 additional senators who have been willing to stand up for a true, clear-eyed vision. Uh, Senators Van Hollen, Rubio, Stabenow, Gardner, Markey, Cornyn, Warren, Romney, Peters, Portman, Feinstein, Wyden, Duckworth, Reed, Schumer, Udall, Harris, Whitehouse, Sanders, Klobuchar, Cardin, Booker, Casey, Bennett, Rosen, Brown, Cortez, Mastro. I want to thank them all. And before I ask for a unanimous consent, I'll yield to my colleague from Texas. Mr. President. Senator for Texas. Mr. President, I'm proud to join with my colleague from New Jersey today in urging the Senate to take up and pass the bipartisan Menendez-Cruz resolution affirming U.S. recognition of the Armenian Genocide. From 1915 to 1923, the Ottoman Empire carried out a forced deportation of nearly 2 million Armenians, of whom 1.5 million were killed. It was an atrocious genocide. That it happened is a fact and an undeniable reality. In fact, the very word genocide, which literally means the killing of an entire people, was coined by Raphael Lemkin to describe the horrific nature of the Ottoman Empire's calculated extermination of the Armenians. We must never be silenced in response to atrocities. Over 100 years ago, the world was silent as the Armenian people suffered and were murdered. And many people today are still unaware of what happened. With this resolution, we are saying that it is the policy of the United States of America to commemorate the Armenian Genocide through official recognition and remembrance. We have a moral duty to acknowledge what happened to 1.5 million innocent souls. It's the right thing to do. And Mr. President, I certainly understand the concerns of some of my colleagues who worry that this resolution could irreversibly poison the U.S.-Turkey relationship and push Turkey into the arms of Russia. But I don't believe those concerns have any sound basis. As my colleague from New Jersey pointed out, 12 NATO nations have similarly recognized the Armenian genocide. Yes, Turkey is a NATO ally, but allies can speak the truth to each other. We should never be afraid to tell the truth. And alliances grounded in lies are themselves unsustainable. Additionally, the Foreign Relations Committee 
in the coming days will be marking up an enormous package of sanctions on Turkey. The horse has left the barn. There's no good reason for the administration to object to this resolution and the effect of doing so is to deny recognition of this chilling moment of history. Let me close by echoing the optimism the senator from New Jersey gave. We may well see an objection here today as we did when Senator Menendez and I previously came to the Senate floor and sought to pass this just a couple of weeks ago. But I believe in the coming days and weeks we will get this passed. That this objection, I hope, will be only temporary. And I look forward to the day, hopefully very, very soon, well, when all 100 senators, Democrats and Republicans, are united in simply speaking the truth, recognizing the genocide that occurred, and making perfectly clear that America stands against genocide. I yield the floor. Madam, Mr. President. The senator for New Jersey. Mr. President, I, I thank my colleague from Texas for his eloquent statement, for his forthrightness on this issue. Uh, and Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate Foreign Relations Committee be discharged from further consideration of SRES 150 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. I further ask that the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and that motions to reconsider be considered, made, and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Mr. With that, uh, Senator for North, North Dakota. Mr. President, reserving the right to object, I don't think there's a single member of the United States Senate who, does, who doesn't have serious concerns about Turkey's behavior, both historically and currently. Uh, in fact, I support the spirit of this resolution. I suspect uh, 99 of my colleagues do, and at the right time, we may pass it, as Senator Cruz has said, stated. However, I don't think this is the right time. If there is a right time, this certainly isn't it, and, and, and largely because just hours ago, our president returned from London, the NATO summit with NATO leaders, where this was a topic of discussion with the leadership from Turkey. Not, this being being uh, the genocide resolution, as well as uh, or the acknowledgement of genocide, as well as the purchase of the S-400, and I, I want to have a clear readout of the president's interaction and discussion with uh, President Erdogan and our delegation's negotiations with Turkey before adopting this resolution. I don't think we can take the risk of undermining the complex and ongoing diplomatic efforts which are in our national security interests as a country. I too want to be on the right side of history. I believe we will be on the right side of history. But these negotiations that the, that the president is currently in are part of getting on the right side of history. And I appreciate the ongoing conversations and still hope that we're able to overcome the challenges in the bilateral relationship with Turkey. Now, we know that these challenges are and what, what they are, and we all share the goal of seeing them appropriately addressed. But there's no good alternative right now. Adoption of this resolution today, in my view, is unnecessary, Mr. President, and might very well undermine that diplomatic effort at a key time. I do not intend to continuously object to this resolution. But I believe it is appropriate for me to do so at this time. And so, Mr. President, I object. Objection heard. Mr. President. Senator for New Jersey. I'm, I'm deeply disappointed. Uh, once again, this is the third time that a Republican senator has come to the floor to object to the genocide resolution, the recognition of the genocide resolution. And uh, there's never a good time. There's never a good time. In my view, there's always the right time, however, to recognize genocide as genocide. My colleague from North Dakota actually sponsored H. Res. 20, the 220, the Armenian Genocide Resolution, affirming, quote, the proper commemoration and consistent condemnation of the Armenian Genocide will strengthen our international standing in preventing modern day genocides when he was a member of the House of Representatives. It, he was right then, he was right then, and the time was right then, and the time is right now. Uh, you know, President Erdogan was here in the United States a couple weeks ago, 
There is a meeting at the White House. A few of my colleagues had the privilege of uh, joining the president, expressing their discontent. Erdogan was given options, a way out of the dilemma that Turkey has put themselves in with the S-400. Basically, they were told either return it to Russia, destroy it in our presence, and or give it to us, which of course, Russia will never allow that to happen for us to have their technology. There was a deadline, it was yesterday. I waited to today to make sure that in fact, we wouldn't intercede in any way with the possibility, but Turkey, in the interim, while this is going on, they used the S-400 to fire at an F-16 to see if they could take it down. Really? Really? So this premise that there was a meeting in NATO, well, there was a meeting in Washington. Then there was a meeting in NATO. They still haven't done anything on the S-400. They still haven't exercised any of the options that have been given to them. So I just want my colleagues to know that I intend to come once a week to the Senate floor, and all those who want to be listed on the wrong side of history, they have the option of doing so. I'm not going to cease until we do what is morally and principally right, and that is recognize the Armenian genocide as a host of other nations have done as well. With that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator for Delaware. Mr. President, I serve on the Senate Judiciary Committee, and as a member of the Bar Association of Delaware and a member of the United States Senate, I'm particularly concerned about rising issues around qualification and competence. So let me Hello, this is uh, Aram. Uh, if you're uh, on this channel, you just finished watching uh, Senator Menendez and Senator well, Cruz uh, call for unanimous consent for the adoption of uh, SRES 150, the Armenian Genocide Resolution. And, and then subsequent to that, you saw Senator uh, Kevin Kramer from North Dakota step up and object to the unanimous consent request, which means that that one senator stood in the way of the other, you know, 90 plus senators uh, casting their votes for uh, recognition of uh, the uh, Armenian genocide. Uh, the irony here is that uh, Senator uh, Kramer, as a U.S. representative, uh, was a co-sponsor of uh, HRS 220 in, in 2017. That resolution uh, made it very clear that America should recognize the Armenian genocide, that it's the right thing to do, and that in addition, uh, U.S. Uh, commemoration and recognition and remembrance of the Armenian genocide will contribute to helping prevent other atrocities around the world. Uh, you know, that, that that moral stand apparently has been forgotten. I think we can um, uh, pretty uh, clearly conclude that uh, this isn't necessarily a, a Kevin Kramer uh, decision, although he bears responsibility for the the, 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 you know, deeply, profoundly uh, uh, immoral step he took today, uh, but it's at the request uh, of an administration that is enforcing Recep Erdogan's um, uh, veto. Uh, that is uh, uh, basically exercising a veto over U.S. policy. Erdogan, uh, you know, we say that Erdogan doesn't get a vote in the U.S. Senate. Uh, well, it seems that he does, at least uh, via the White House. You know, we have a situation where we have a situation where uh, you know a very small handful of senators are able to block the rest of the Senate from expressing uh, their will on an issue that speaks directly to, to our values as Americans. We saw what happened in the House. When the House was given a chance to vote, uh, an overwhelming majority. What was that? What, what was the vote total there, Tedes? 405. And, and to, to what? To what? Like 11? A handful, right? So let's, you know, let's project it onto the Senate. Uh, it's going to be something like, uh, you know, a 90 plus votes in favor, a handful against. Yeah. Again, uh, Senator Kramer said it today that he supports the spirit of the resolution. Um, um, you know, uh, Graham has said that he won't block it again. Uh, Purdue, we haven't heard from. Uh, they've definitely heard from you. I mean, and our friends, Greeks and others around the country have definitely weighed in with those uh, senators. Um, but uh, the, what they're saying essentially is that the resolution will pass, that it has the, um, the, the broad bipartisan support pass, that even those opposing it might very well vote for it, uh, but that it's not the right time. You know, here we are 104 years out, 104 years um, after uh, the Armenian genocide, uh, Senator Kramer says, you know, it's not the right time. That is um, uh, sort of a very bankrupt, very bankrupt and uh, really outrageous comment. So he needs to hear from you. He needs to hear from you. We have here uh, the way you can contact Senator Kramer. Gives U.S. Senator Kevin Kramer a call. Dial 202-224-2043. I'm going to leave it on screen for a second. Write that down. Share it with your friends. Tweet it out. 
post it to your Facebook page. Let Senator Kramer hear um, that he needs to be on the right side of this issue. It was uh, about two years ago that we actually uh, sat down with uh, Senator Kramer, um, along with um, Dean Cain, who played Superman on TV. And the senator was uh, very gracious and very supportive and uh, spoke against the denial of the Armenian genocide, uh, spoke in favor of the resolution, HRS 220, which he then co-sponsored, you know. And uh, so uh, it looks to, to us that the White House is, is kind of really having difficulty in finding allies on this issue. And they actually had to approach a senator who actually is, a, is on the right side of the issue or was on the right side of the issue moving to the wrong side. I don't think it's a comfortable place for the, the senator, uh, but it's it's where it's where he decided to stand. And that's 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 profoundly wrong and he needs to hear that uh, from all of us. Uh Tedes, uh what what's what's next on the on our agenda? So their arguments are getting weaker and weaker by by the week. And Senator Menendez is very clear. He is going to go on the floor every single week until this passes. So let's make that phone call to Senator Menendez, uh, Senator Kramer. Let's make that phone call to uh, Majority Leader McConnell. Uh, let's make that call to Senator Rich of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, let's keep the pressure going because uh, we need this to pass. Also, folks, make a phone call to your senator. Even if they've co-sponsored already, ask them to come on the floor when Senator Menendez is going to do his UC and ask them to also speak in favor. Yeah, I think... Uh... Uh, we definitely need as much support, as broad bipartisan support as possible. Uh, we know that on the Foreign Relations Committee, there's, I think, essentially every Democrat is is with us. But we also have four, I believe, Tennessee, we have four uh, Senate sponsors on the Republican side yes. within the committee. Gardner, Romney, Rubio, and Cruz, right? right? So that, that, that's four. Yeah, and, Senator and Portman is also a Sen sponsor, Senator another Republican. Absolutely. And uh, so it's, it's a bipartisan issue. It, it's one that uh, will pass. It's one that... Uh, that um, the president, you know, for um, is you know giving it's like a it's like being traded as some sort of commodity uh, with uh, the Erdogan government. Um, the idea that's the wrong time is you know absolutely ridiculous. So we need to weigh in. We did that on on two ninety six on the House side. Uh, the community stepped up uh, like never before, and we need that to happen again on the Senate side. We need a a flood of phone calls. If there's uh, a doubt in your mind that your call will make a difference. Just look back at 296. Just look back at the vote in the U.S. House on uh, October 29th. Uh, we all watched that vote. We all um, had that feeling in our hearts that this was the right thing to do. America did do the right thing, but not of its own accord. It did so because citizens, uh, Armenians and others, uh, stood up and uh, demanded that our government do the right thing, and they did. America is the place that, that gets it right, but it takes work, it takes time, uh, it takes effort. Uh, Senator Menendez really, really uh, nailed it when he said he's going to come to the floor you know, every week because he wants Americans, Armenians, Greeks, and others uh, to know exactly where senators stand. And we should know where they stand. Now we know uh, that Senator Graham was against it, but he backed off. Senator Perdue backed, uh, uh, objected to the resolution once. Uh, for all we know, he's still against it, but, but we, need to, we need to hear from him on that subject. And now we know that Senator Kramer, a former supporter, is against it. He needs to hear from us. He needs to uh, answer also to his own citizens. Why is it that a resolution that would to commemorate Christian martyrs, um, millions of Armenians, Greeks, Assyrians, Chaldeans, Syriacs, uh, Arameans, and Maronites, uh, the, the vast Christian presence of, um, of uh, the Armenian highland, of, of Anatolia, uh, was wiped out. Uh, basically 20% of the, of the population of that territory used to be Christian, and now it's like significantly less than, than 1%. And apparently we can't talk about it. Why? Because Erdogan says we can't. And then he enforces a veto on the White House. The White House leans on a, a single senator and prevents the rest of the Senate from, from doing the right thing. So it's absolutely essential uh, that you weigh in. We're going to continue pressing for unanimous consent. Ted as well as continue to support the work of um, continue to support the work of Senators Menendez and Cruz, uh, as long along with others. You know, we're uh, constantly uh, up on the hill. Ted is, is visiting with senators and their staffs um, on a regular basis. We're going to work with our coalition partners. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, and we need you to, to stay engaged. Um, the Senator Menendez said he'll be on the floor every week, uh, and, and he's going to see exactly how much opposition th this White House has left. And it, it seems like um, they're facing increasing challenges uh, finding allies on this issue. I think that, uh, as I've said before, if this was a, a chess game, uh, they're down pieces, they're down position, and uh, ultimately we have a winning game ahead of us, but we need to play it very intelligently, very persistently, uh, very aggressively. Uh, Tennis, some final thoughts before we uh, before we head out? So keep in mind of what uh, Senator Cruz's statement was too. 
the Senate is going to take up a Turkey sanctions bill, right. a massive package of Turkey sanctions next week. If the Senate is willing to sanction Turkey, there is absolutely no issue on timing, no issue on passing the Armenian Genocide Resolution. This is something Ankar has been fighting against for decades, and it lost in the House. It's time for it to lose in the Senate. Absolutely. If we're going to get America on the right side of this issue, it'll be good for uh, America, be good for uh, uh, us as Armenian Americans, uh, ultimately a step toward justice for the Armenian Genocide. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off, but please do stay tuned. I'll put up this on the screen if you didn't get it before. 202-224-2043. Call. Call, 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 call. 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 Make those calls right away. Uh, you know, ask your friends and family. Uh, double check. Follow up. Uh, let's get those calls in. Um, also visit anca.org uh, slash call. There's a, a lot of ways you can help. Stay in touch with us through our, our, our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Twitter account. So thanks very much.